Hey there, Pammy. Hi, Brooke. So just a reminder that uh, this is going to be a two-parter. This is part two. Yes. So if you have not listened to part one, hit pause and go back to episode 119. Go back. Yes. It's worth it. So worth it. Our etiquette expert gives some fantastic uh, information. She's great. Yes. So, um, but if you've already heard it, then uh, keep hitting play and move forward. And enjoy. Something borrowed, something blue. Give us all your juicy news, sensational, irrational. It's wedding confessionals. Well, now I feel like we definitely know her point of view with weddings. Yes. Um, Do you guys want to get into some confessionals? Let's do it. Yeah. Yes. The way confessionals work is that listeners submit um, via email, voicemail, or on our website. It's always anonymous. Mm -hmm. And um, we, and I always make Pam go first. And I have (laughs) always asked her because she's the one that picks out which confessionals we do. And I always beg her to do the longest ones because I don't like to read. And wow, you did. (laughs) I'm taking one for the team. Thank you, Pammy. Yes. see how I get through it. (laughs) All right. Hello, ladies. I have recently discovered your podcast and I am addicted. Thanks for bringing some laughs into my planning process. My fiance and I are getting married this June and we couldn't be more excited. We are fairly young, early 20s, and most of his groomsmen haven't been in a wedding before or even been to many weddings. Because of this, They don't fully understand how it all works, which is usually fine. But minutes after my fiance asked his guys, two of them immediately started asking him, why aren't we doing things differently? Why are we having one officiant instead of another, etc.? And one got a bit bit upset when he learned that his, the groomsman's, brother wasn't also in the bridal party. The brother and my fiancé are friends, but they are not as close, and we chose to limit our party to siblings and closest friends, four on each side. My fiancé said we were just wanting to keep things smaller and use the excuse that it it wouldn't be even on my side if he added the brother. We discussed adding him to appease the groomsmen, but decided against it. The next time I saw the groomsman, he started asking me if I could add another person to my side so his brother could be in the wedding party. It was so awkward, and I just kind of stammered out that I don't really have anyone to ask, and it's a bit short notice now as our wedding was four months away. And he said, okay, and I thought we had made it through the drama. Then, a few weeks later, a different groomsman told my fiancé how... We should gift them all expensive watches for being in the bridal party since the bride's parents pay for it all anyway. (laughs) My parents are helping but not paying for all. And I was quite offended to hear how he just assumed that we would give them expensive watches. Of course, we're going to give them thank you gifts. But it feels so rude to ask. Even more rude rude to assume that we uh, have money to spend because he thinks it's from my parents. I didn't expect the groomsmen, who are not even family, to have so many opinions about our wedding. It's quite discouraging for my fiancé, as it feels like he's burdening his friends by having a wedding that he and I want to have. Any advice on how to handle the peanut gallery comments graciously and not damage any friendships? These guys have been in my fiancé's life since he was a kid, and we want to stay friends long after the wedding but it's getting harder for me to respect them when they try and change my bridal party or expect expensive gifts. Thanks, groomsmanzillas. (laughs) That was so good. I loved this one. (laughs) Wow. Um, I can't wait to hear what our (laughs) etiquette expert has to say. (laughs) Me too. This is made for Mariah. (laughs) How do you politely tell these guys back off (laughs) right this is a good one sometimes i mean wow they really just they really just won't give up right (laughs) (laughs) right oh my goodness yeah relentless definitely so i think that here the best piece of advice i could give is having an upfront and honest conversation right the fiance should take it upon himself to respectfully confront his groomsmen And there's a way to do it tastefully, right? So the first part would be to acknowledge them 
And clearly they want the attention, right? Clearly they want to pat on the back <laughs> for all of their hard work as groomsmen. So the first part of that sentence should be, we're so appreciative of you being a part of our special day. You're so special to us. And then avoid using the word but, right? So don't say you're so special to us, but, right? Instead, you would say, we appreciate you so much. We just can't swing having an extra person right now. The less that you explain, the less, it doesn't need an explanation, right? At the end of the day, this is their decision. It's their budget. It's their wedding. They can show their appreciation to the groomsmen, but ultimately the groomsmen don't get the say, right? And so it's all about making them feel valued while still putting your foot down. Yeah. Pammy, what do yes. you think? Well, I think... You know, to I mean, I love I love you saying to avoid using the but. That's so key. It's so key. Um, I think that you can also um, by not explaining, but say, hey, you know, they're not in the wedding party, but they're gonna be at um, you know at everything. They're gonna be at all of the events. There's nothing, you know, like like we just said, we were not we we said in the earlier episode. Um, that we were not specifically in each other's weddings, but we were like honorary um, bridesmaids in each other's yeah. weddings. Where's my watch, Pam? <laughs> <laughs> and they're watching too many videos or movies on expensive <laughs> gifts being given. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, it's a it, these are tokens that you're giving these people for being a part but you, you're right just showing them that appreciation but letting you know that extra one I can't believe he went to the bride and was like hey can you add somebody I mean my jaw dropped when I read that it really I I just I have no hope in my generation really <laughs> I think it's kind of like he went to dad and dad said no so he went to go ask mom to see if yes. she would say yes <laughs> that's exactly what it is yes it must have worked in the past Okay, I'm going to try to have like a positive spin on this. I'm trying to like, <laughs> trying to see every different angle of this. One, I think it is great that the person who wrote to us understands that all of this is coming from a kind of a good place that this guy loves his brother and, you know, they're just really excited. And obviously a lot of this comes from just inexperience about weddings and potentially personal finances and how right. one spends money. And, um, and I, I, you know, you are being gracious to them already, even in just the way you're writing this, e this, this, this confessional. So I think that's great. Um, I also just as a kind of positive spin on this to sort of think about these guys, even though they're coming across as such dopes and such, <laughs> I mean, just total dodos. But I will say <laughs> is that it's kind of cool that we are breaking gender norms. You know, these are, I'm, I, I, assume straight dudes who are excited about wedding planning. Yeah. I mean, yes. usually you get this from the toll. It's usually you hear the women fighting when they're dealing with traditional cisgender. But like we're dealing now with a bunch of dudes who are excited about a wedding. Can't wait to be even more involved. Good know point. about That's a great point. Know that there's gifts involved for other people. Like they're so amped about this <laughs> wedding. So I say try to take that energy and channel it in towards making Maybe they do a fun dance at the reception or maybe they help really make a really elaborate, you know, groom or bachelor party. Like take this energy that they clearly have. They're in it. And mm -hmm. use it to your advantage. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Give point. them some responsibility. They want to be involved. <laughs> clearly. They are <laughs> very excited about weddings. Uh, the other thing is that, um, and you kind of mentioned this, Mariah, where you said, you know, her fiance should be having this conversation with them. 100% kind of like we talk about with in-laws where like if you're having problems with in-laws it's really your fiance you should be dealing with their direct family member same thing even though this guy came to you and was requesting stuff I think in general let him deal with his friends, his friends. and, it, and mm -hmm. it sounds like you're trying to say from the get-go that you're trying to deal with it so that everyone remains friends afterwards and 100% these are all short-term problems after the wedding is over I mean who knows what they expect in other days I mean <laughs> I don't know what they expect on their birthdays or like what kind of gifts we're expecting for the rest of their lives. But in general, it sounds like they're just really excited. <laughs> it's like a bunch of golden retrievers. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Begging for watches. <laughs> if you could see us, Brooke and I are both wiggling like dogs right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> meanwhile, my oh, she's no. Meanwhile, oh. my dog's completely passed out. <laughs> she is. It's good. All right, on to number two. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of short. Thanks, Pam. Welcome. Okay. Confessional number two. Hello, Brooke, Pam, guest, and Ruth. I was so excited to be writing to you all. This has been my favorite podcast for years. And as soon as I got engaged this past December, I knew I could turn to you all as soon as I needed help. Here is what I need advice on. I am a teacher, so we decided to plan our wedding over spring break so that I would be off of work the week leading up to the wedding. We found the perfect venue at a great price, but the Saturday was already booked. That left us with Friday, March 17th as our wedding date, aka St. Patrick's Day. My question is, should we do something at our wedding to acknowledge the holiday? It isn't exactly the classiest holiday, and I definitely don't want it to be the theme of the wedding, but I didn't know if you had any ideas on how to incorporate some subtle touches to the decor, outfits, drinks, etc., It seems like we could maybe do something cute, but I think it could get really cheesy really quick. Maybe it's just dumb and we shouldn't do anything related to the holiday besides get people drunk. (laughs) Please share any advice or ideas you might have from Anonymous. Hmm. Okay. So now Mm. we get to help like plan this person's wedding. I am in. (laughs) (laughs) This is my dream confessional. (laughs) Um, okay, so St. Patrick's Day. First of all, I will say, yes, we can think of it as tacky. But in the end of the day, it is a saint's day, right? It's a Catholic mm-hmm. holiday as a former Catholic can tell you it's like it, it has become more in America, I feel like kind of this party party thing like I read mm-hmm. during this recent St. Patrick's Day on Twitter, like all the Irish people are like, you Americans are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all the little goofy things we do but um yeah so i guess we get to dream plan this person's saint patrick's day wedding first of all do you think saint patrick's day is tacky um no i mean i i think there are people who make it tacky for sure um <laughs> but i don't think on the whole that it is but i think it, in america it is very it's very different like you said Oh, you know, Mariah, I want your perspective, too, because you used to live in New York City, and I also used to live in New York City. Have you experienced the St. Patrick's Day parade through Midtown or through Manhattan? I have not experienced it in person, no. Um, That is something that I probably would not go to because (laughs) I think I'd be maybe a little claustrophobic around all those people. I mean, I never did the the Macy's Day, you know, pre Thanksgiving or anything like that. I I prefer to watch it from my TV, really. Yeah. um, But it is a big, it is a big New York tradition, which I I love New York traditions. I just personally haven't been. Yeah, I only have been to one because I was working in Midtown and it actually would go Mm -hmm. past my office. You know, St. Patrick's Day just lands where it lands. So if it's on a weekday, you know, I'm commuting in with all of these people. (laughs) So there is a portion of it that is very much, you know, like, let's get drunk at 10 a.m. and go to a parade. Like it, it is, you know, it can get a little sloppy and rowdy and that sort of a thing. And it feels very New Year's Eve-esque, you know, or it's just kind of a day to party. But there is a whole aspect of it that is very like celebrating a culture. It's basically celebrating Irish Americans. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the parade itself, mm-hmm. it's a lot of different groups and families yeah. and, you know, the police department and fire department, like people that are Irish American within those departments, like they're part of mm-hmm. the parade. So it can be wholesome. It's just a lot of the things that are popular popularized on television. I mean, also it's like, you know, bars got to make money. So it's like, if it's an excuse to like, you know, I guess we'll just throw, yeah, we'll throw a St. Patrick's Day party. And like, they're just trying to like, you know, keep their doors open, but there is an aspect of it that can be very fun and family friendly. Um, So, okay. So now we get into actually figuring out details that we think would be cool. Does anybody have an idea? I think that, I think that I would, I don't know. I'm stuck on this one because I would hate for this person to look back and regret that they mixed the two, that they mixed the two days, right? That they mixed St. Patrick's Day with their wedding day just because it happens to fall on that day. So I'm trying, I'm trying to think of something that would be a nice subtle token to appreciate the holiday without looking back and saying, I can't believe that I made my wedding 
the magic day themed. Yeah, like you don't have to have, you know, bagpipes and, you know, a whole theme, <laughs> but you can do like little things. I was thinking you during the month of March, Pammy, gave a lot of bridal breaks of cocktails that were sort of, um, you know, St. Patrick's themed. Theme. I personally, mm-hmm. after you recommended the Irish Maid, I made them for a St. Patrick's Day dinner that I went to and they were a big hit. And they're not corny. It's just like a pretty, you know, it's like an, an Irish whiskey with like some simple syrup, blah, blah, blah. It was really, it was really pretty. So, I mean, you could kind of do a signature cocktail that's a nod to it. That way, again, if you don't want the visual of like your longstanding photos mm-hmm. to look like a St. Patrick's Day themed wedding, mm-hmm. you could do something on the menu or at the cocktail, like something that's a nod to it. But yeah, I don't think you have to do it. No, no. I think- the, other, the other thing is to maybe use the word lucky, right? Mm. To kind of bring that into it, right? That you're, you know, lucky to be in love or lucky to have all your loved ones with you, even if it's just during a toast or on a, you know, on a save the date, right? Something like that, using the word luck so that it's not necessarily about green or about beer, but (laughs) (laughs) the, 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 the luck aspect of it. I like that. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking too, uh, along those lines of, you know, you could do a little shamrock um, on your napkins or something. You could do just a little token of that somewhere, you know, where it's small, but still a little nod. Um, But yeah, definitely not going with the full theme. Yeah. In general, if you didn't do anything at all, I don't think anyone's going to roll their eyes and be like, how dare her not make this a St. Patrick's Day themed wedding? (laughs) Right. I agree. Especially if you're not Irish and you're not Catholic and there's no real connection to it. Yeah. You know, there are plenty of people that have weddings, you know, kind of in, you know, December or late December, and they don't do Mm -hmm. a drop of Christmas or Hanukkah or anything in their weddings. They just kind of, it's my wedding just happens to fall around this time. Making it winter themed. Yeah, I mean, I think absolutely. I imagine if it's in the spring, there's going to be hints of spring throughout, and I feel like that's pretty close. But yeah, you do not have to have like a little leprechaun on every table, <laughs> <laughs> or just go full out and just go nuts. Lucky charms at every table. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a green dress instead of white. Yes, <laughs> I mean, you could go yeah. fun with if, it but yeah it's if, not your thing if you wanted to do it go <laughs> nuts but if you don't yeah don't feel guilty that you're not having this <laughs> st patrick's day bonanza <laughs> oh my gosh i'm just thinking of all like the things that you could do for an- okay let's give the tacky ideas what are you thinking <laughs> <laughs> now i just want to know maybe she's gonna dive into this yeah i mean you know definitely the the color has to be emerald green yeah um green beer green beer sure 100 percent. yeah um mm-hmm. oh yeah you know the the table corn decor. beef oh corn beef cabbage and cabbage is your for, meal for mm. sure with potatoes absolutely irish soda bread yes yes instead of a dinner roll right I, honestly though again i went to this dinner party that was on saint patrick's day so i was trying to figure out like what an appetizer or a beverage that i could bring so i looked at all of these articles on like buzzfeed and delish and trying to find something to bring Mm -hmm. most of them are there aren't that many like specific saint patrick's day dishes it's very short list and then after that not a lot of variation right and after that all the suggestions are just things that are green it was like guacamole i'm like guys this is not no (laughs) It was just <laughs> things that were green. That's I was like, I mean, Irish. I guess, but like, what? I'm going to bring guacamole to the party? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, we are on to number three. I'm done ranting about St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. <laughs> She's done. Um, Mariah, do you want to read number three? I would love to. So confessional number three. Hi, lovely ladies, especially beloved Ruth. I'm writing with a question that's 100% silly, but also still bothering me. So I wanted to ask people with some more wedding etiquette knowledge. My fiance is super supportive, but that means he jumps right to you do you, which I love, but I want more reasoning here. For For my upcoming winter wedding, my dress is champagne with beautiful gold sparkly rose details all over the skirt and bodice. I'm going to be a glitter bomb and I'm pumped. (laughs) <laughs> that means <laughs> that means for bridesmaids and the mother of the bride and mother of the groom, the only rules were were number one, here's your color. 
Number two, make it long. And number three, no sparkles, please. You can see where this is going. My mom has been back in the dating world for a few years now and has directly told me multiple times she wants to leapfrog my wedding with hers and has also expressed bitterness about my fiance before. Again, he's a saint, medical resident during COVID. So as the wedding gets closer, that's more and more of a sore spot for her. That means that when she bought literally 18 dresses of all types, but claims to hate every single one except the one covered in sparkles, literally neck to toe. I'm having a hard time believing it's not at least a little related to her wanting more attention and kind of lashing out sideways about it. But I've also been in deep wedding planning the last few weeks, especially, so I might be overthinking it. Is this an Amanda Sai just let her have it situation? Is the mother of the bride dress as much of a focus as a white dress on a guest would be? Should I kindly invite her to order more dresses and keep looking? Something else? Thanks for all your wisdom and giggles the last few weeks. I've been binging episodes ever since I found you. Sincerely, just let me sparkle, Mom. Oh, sparkle bomb. Oh, first of all, in case any of our newer listeners, the well, the part in where she says, is this an Amanda side? Just let her have it. Um, that's a reference to a wedding planner and guest has been on the show a bunch of times named Amanda Walker and Amanda talks like this. And most of her advice is just, just let her have it. Just let her have it. Just, let her just put it. her in the wedding. It's just not a big deal. And I mean, that's pretty accurate. That's, that's, that's Amanda's vibe. She's like, yes. it's, it's not a big deal. Not <laughs> I wish I was that relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda has a very unique way of communicating. Just let her have it. Um, so yes, that would be Amanda's advice is just let her have it. But Amanda's not in the room. Right. So we, we already know what Amanda would have said. And you yes. are correct. Yes. <laughs> so what would Mariah say? <laughs> I'm looking at this from two totally different angles. I'll be honest. So the, my first angle is with empathy, right? This might be a, a hard thing for her to, to watch happen. You don't know the reason, you know, the mom's previous relationship situation. This might be difficult to watch this wedding unfold. Do you lead with empathy? Is it worth it becoming a bigger issue and jeopardizing your relationship with her? And are you confident enough in how fabulous your dress is that that's all that matters? So that's the first, the first way I'm looking at it. The second way I'm looking at it is that it's your day and you were upfront about your expectations about what you wanted everyone to wear. And I think that the expectations were fair and there are plenty of options. So I think it would be fair to, you know, respectfully say, I really just want to be the only one in a sparkly dress, but now I'm saying, but right. That's exactly what I said not to do before, (laughs) but let me let me help you find another dress. Let's pick a day this week to together. We'll go out to dinner. We'll go to the store. Let's try them on together. I'm willing to help you find the perfect one. So you're not just leaving her high and dry. So it's really, I'm really looking at it from two different angles. That's fair. What do you think, Pam? Amazing. Um, I, I really like this, uh, this writer. I mean, she really is so, um, she gets it, you know, I think, I think that the fact that she's even writing in about this, um, and just the way she wrote this, like she just is already so mindful of everything that's going on. Um, and I mean, you just bring up two really good points, Mariah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, I like, I like your second point. I, I would lead towards, you know, trying to make it happen the way you want it gently and try and get that that dress. And if mom is still just going to be a stickler, then be like, you know, honestly, bride, it's all about you and people are going to be seeing you. So you don't have to worry, even if mom is in sparkles. I think that is your second choice. I think try and lead to get a second, uh, Mm -hmm. another dress. But if it doesn't work, it's still going to be okay. Yeah, I think even if your mother attached a strobe light to her dress, you are still going to be the star of the show. Mm-hmm. Like there's you are the bride as much as somebody else can pull focus and be it like, it's your it's my day. It's your day. You know, it's your big day. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's no way that anyone's going to know that you're not the bride. You yep. know, and I feel like if that's what you're worried about, and I imagine this is, you know, obviously I'm reading into this, but it sounds like mom pulling focus has probably been a pattern in life, 
you know, and maybe your mother's always been an attention grabber and just kind of like, and again, like Mariah was saying, you know, this chapter in her life, maybe your mother's just kind of struggled with the idea of being old enough for her daughter to get married and like struggling with like the idea that she's on to the next chapter of her life and things didn't go exactly as they had planned because now she's newly single. Like, I think it's I, the fact that you already acknowledge this about your mom. I think like I get it. Like your mom's probably a little extra, probably a lot. <laughs> I'm just projecting here, but like I'm reading into this and I'm getting it. Like mm-hmm. your mom's a lot and it's, your whole life has been dealing with your mom being a lot. So when I think of what to do, I do think it's a matter of, and I, I as much as it, you don't want to hear this, but it really is. And all of us are saying this, the you do you, what your fiance has mm-hmm. been saying, because it actually is true. It's about you prioritizing what is more important to you. If I am in mm-hmm. your shoes right now, I'm in your sparkly cool dress, right? Like I'm feel, I, I, I'm in this beautiful gown. I'm covered in sparkles. I'm a bride. This is exciting for me. I think about the two scenarios on the wedding day. One is my mother is in this kind of gaudy outfit for her being the mother of the bride, but she is feeling herself. She's yes. beautiful. She is happy. She is excited, which means maybe she's less of a pain in the butt today. And like, you know, you're not <laughs> dealing and you know, your mother's like feeling a little bit like a star and let her shine a little bit. And it makes her in a good mood. And it takes the pr- you, one less thing to worry about today, where if she ends up in a dress she doesn't like, are you going to have to hear about it all day? And Are forever you? with the pictures. And, oh, and, and forever. And while yep. uh, oh, you're taking the pictures, it's like, oh, you know, like whatever that other dress. Like, is she the type that's going to bring it up the whole time, which mm-hmm. then ruins your vibe for the day? Now you've got the mom nagging you, blah, blah, blah. And then this negative, right. negative, negative. So in my opinion, when I see this, I see, do you want to let her keep her dress? And a little bit of shine goes to her, but really not really. And she's in the best mood ever. And she feels like she won and she's, you know, excited. Or do you really just, and maybe it is, the priority really is, I want to stick up to my mom. I want this to be my thing. Mm -hmm. And boom, she's not wearing that dress. But then know that there's probably a chance she's going to be a little naggy. So as much as I say you do you, if I was in your situation, I'd let her keep the dress. You're Amanda. I'm Amanda. (laughs) Just let her have it. Just let her have the drown. It's funny when you when you give the advice the two different ways, but then you think about it if you were in if you think about it, if you were in their shoes, the decision gets a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, because that's the thing. I don't know enough about you and enough about what is the most important thing. Is it that like for one damn day you want to be the one in the sparkles and not your mom? And that really is right. it, then make the decision but i think do it, she was up front yes but she she was, do it, it the way mariah is and make it incorporate it into helping her you know pick out the next stress blend our two advices <laughs> <laughs> but you know if if it if you really do think she's going to be annoying let her keep the dress <laughs> <laughs> God, I want to know how I want to know how sparkly her mom's dress is. I know it's a gown. Oh, you know it is, <laughs> head to toe, absolutely. It's a gown. It might have that. It might have that LED light that you mentioned before. <laughs> <laughs> the strobe, yes, the strobe attached to it. <laughs> Just tell whoever's working on your dress, add more sparkles. <laughs> yes. Guarantee that your glitter bomb is even glitterier. Glitterier? <laughs> glitterier. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, please let us know what you did and how it turned out. Yes. Because now I'm curious. And send pictures. I'm very yes. invested in this Yeah, now. We just yes. need to see this dress also. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're very curious. <laughs> now that we've finished confessionals, do you guys want to get into some bridal breaks? Let's do it. Yes. Bridal breaks. Bridal breaks for any of our new listeners are um, suggestions we give not only for brides, but for grooms or anyone helping in the wedding planning process of things to do that have nothing to do with wedding planning. So you can just step away and like not have to think about all of the etiquette you're probably screwing up. <laughs> <laughs> And relax and enjoy your life. And remember that there's more to life than just wedding planning. Yes. Pammy usually gives a cocktail. Mm -hmm. I usually suggest something pop culture. And our guests, man, we get anything. So I'm I'm curious to hear what our guest has to say. So Pammy, do you want to go first? Yes. So I found this uh, cocktail on dashofjazz.com. And it is a bubbly blood orange bourbon smash. Ooh. Yes. Wow. And uh, it just sounds so good. So it's blood orange segments, um, mint, bourbon whiskey, maple syrup, or simple syrup, and uh, dry champagne. It's really 
I think, pretty simple, but all of those flavors together just sounds so good. I also like it because blood orange would make a beautiful garnish. They're so pretty mm-hmm. sliced. Yes, they are beautiful. And I think anything with the word smash in it is probably has to be good, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Mariah, do you want to go next? Sure. So mine is season four of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Are you two yes. fans of the yes. show? Yes. So – I like, have you seen the show? I have. I have not seen the most recent season. We keep putting it off because my husband's like, I just don't have the energy because you really have to focus when you watch it. You know what I it's mean? So there's smart. so much going on. Yes. So actually it might happen tonight. Okay. Now I'm, now I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> tell us more. So my first I've watched. Okay. So let me just get, let me back up and give you some history. I'm like a marvelous Mrs. Maisel super fan. I've been to all of the like exhibits in the city all the premiere events that they do. I stayed at the the Midge Maisel suite at the Plaza Hotel, got my hair done to look like Midge. I mean, yes. I'm really like a, like a crazy super fan. So my favorite part of this season, I think the costumes were even a step up than they've been from what they've been over the past three seasons. So that's, and someone that comes from fashion, that's always my favorite part, but this season, and, and I think it's just, extra funny and extra witty so I'm excited for you to watch it oh, I'm so excited every season they go in like a different direction and it's kind of the world gets bigger and I mm-hmm. think it's so mm-hmm. cool to watch so yeah. good oh, and so- now they're in the 60s so it changes the changes the pace a little bit interesting oh yeah because time keeps marching on <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. and that is on Amazon right yeah Okay, great. Yes. So, and if you've never seen it, then man, you've got a binge to go through. Catch up. Yes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And as we were discussing before, I and you and you and I are both big Gilmore Girls fans. And as Gilmore Girl fans, we feel very protective of that show because it's seen as like kind of a kid's show. It was on the WB. And I always was like, man, why didn't the show win Emmys? So to watch the show creator have Mrs. Maisel on all that show win, win Emmys, it's like, yes, I had good taste. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, bonus Prado break. Gilmore Girls, binge that. It's on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> that's one always of the best shows ever created. Yeah, that's I would, my... go, I would go at... I would go to battle for that. Yeah, I definitely, that's one of my go-to <laughs> comfort ones. You know, when you want to watch something over yeah. and over again, mm-hmm. that's mine. I'll, yeah. I'll rewatch Aww. season one over and over again. <laughs> All right. So my bridal break for today is also TV. It is a show on Netflix that I discovered. Again, the algorithm, the algorithm just (laughs) pops up and goes, would you like this show? And I just hit play and I go, you know, I would. (laughs) (laughs) And Netflix suggested a newer show called Is It Cake? Yes. And you've seen it, Pam? I did. I watched it with my kids. It's we so loved funny because I saw it. I thought, oh, this is great for Pam because it's very kid friendly. Yes. So the way basically is a cake is going to scratch the itch that you have because there's no current um, nailed it out. Mm-hmm. So nailed it being the, the show all about amateur bakers doing terrible. It's mm-hmm. just so silly watching them terribly bake these cakes. <laughs> yes. So is it cake <laughs> is sort of a spin on that where it's amateurs that have gotten really good at making realistic looking cakes. They're so good. So it's a cake that is technically a cake, but it looks like a shoe. Everyone's seen it on like, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of that on YouTube or Instagram mm-hmm. or TikTok where you see somebody yeah. and then somebody puts a knife through it and it like blows up your brain. Yes. <laughs> right? Because out of nowhere, this like, you know, box of cereal is like squishy and you're like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. So um, the way the show works is they have amateur contestants that have gotten really good at this cake baking. In round one, the amateur bakers have to figure out what is cake in the list of or the, yes. the, the, the re- assortment in front of them. They have to try and pick it out. Yes. And then from there, a few get chosen to make cakes for other people to decide if their cake is like in the selection of cakes. Is it cake? Is it not cake? And again, just like in the YouTube or or TikTok videos where you see that knife go through it, they're doing that like 15 times in one episode. So it's very it's so satisfying. satisfying. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Okay, all... I know what I'm doing tonight. And, <laughs> uh, you know, as a as a as an audience member, we get to play along because we don't know ahead of time what is cake and what isn't either. So no. we would pause the TV and decide which one we thought was cake. You paused it? Yeah. Because I wanted to know. Like I was like, Tristan, which one do you think? It's kind of like when you watch, you know, um, House Hunters where you pause and you go, I picked House House number three and Tristan's like house number one <laughs> same thing where you pause and I'm like number eight's the hamburger <laughs> my daughter was pretty good at picking out the I ones. was terrible I was terrible too <laughs> 
she she got I have them. To watch it. Yes, and the host is Mikey Day, who's from SNL, so he's really funny. So again, like kind of like nailed it where they have a really funny host, really sweet, kid friendly. You can watch with any of your family, and a good like silly show to have on that's definitely going to make you smile if you're stressed out. Yep. Is this cake? <laughs> and the title yeah. is good. Is it cake? Is a fantastic title. <laughs> um, so that's all of our bridal breaks, yes. Mariah. Thank you for being on the show. Yes, thank you oh, so thank much. Oh, thank you for having me. This was so much fun. Um, before you go, can you tell our listeners more about how to find you and your services and everything like that? Sure. So I'm on Instagram and TikTok. I'm still learning TikTok, but at Old Soul Etiquette. And then I also have a website, oldsouletiquette.com, which lists all of my services and offerings. Boom. Guys, yes. follow her. She is so soothing and so fun. Oh, and great tips. And I genuinely learned stuff. I really yes. like the ones you've been doing about the historical way that we got to certain things. I think are really interesting. I find that fascinating, too. I was hoping that other people would be interested in it as well. It sort of gives an explanation of why we do the things that we do, because oftentimes I'll teach something and someone will say, why? So what? <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm like, well, there's actually a reasonable explanation of why we do it. <laughs> I love that. Um, so now that Mariah's told us all the ways that all the ways that someone can find her now in the form of a quiz, we find out all the different ways that listeners can get in contact with us. Yes. It's a quiz that I give Pam somewhere along the line. We just decided we'd do it this way. And by we, we. me, mm -hmm. <laughs> Pam is getting very good at it. I don't know about today, though. Really? I'm not feeling very strong today. I believe in you. I have faith. <laughs> Pamela, <clears throat> we have a website. What is our website, Pammy? Weddingconfessionals.com. From there, you can find links to where we are on social media. What are the five places we are available on social media? Instagram, yep. Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, and... I told you, my brain is. What you're? What do you? We are on face? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, <laughs> and TikTok. Twitter, that's the one. Twitter. Also on um, the website, you can find links to our show notes. So um, if you go on there and you hit episode guide, you can find all the links. So when we talk about like, oh, this article and all this stuff about Mariah, you're going to find all of that information It'll on the show there. notes on the website. Um, also, we would love to get your confessionals. We do. Yes. So if you have coming. questions, you have crazy stories to tell, it's always anonymous. If you have follow ups to tell us, please give us your follow ups. We're very nosy. We need to know what happened. <laughs> We're dying to know if we gave you bad advice. So far, we've been pretty good. We've been okay. okay. Fingers crossed. It yes. continues. <laughs> um, there are three ways that you can send us your confessionals. Um, one is uh, an email. What is our email address, Pammy? Weddingconfessionals at gmail.com. We have a phone number that you can call and leave us a voicemail. We just transcribe it. We don't use your voice on the podcast. So again, it's very anonymous. Pammy, what is the phone number? <laughs> Four three four. Yes. Nine three three. Mm -hmm. Two six six three. You did it. Oh my god. Yay. <laughs> I think you're faking it now because you've no. got it a bunch of times in the row now. <laughs> yes, but my brain is not she working. She can be taught today. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, there's another way that's even more anonymous. If you go on our website and click on what tab, Pam. Tell us your secret. Yes. From there, it's a quick form. You put in a name. Just make up a name. Make it cute. Make it fun. And then yeah. there's another box where you tippity tap in all of your drama and questions. And then you hit submit. So easy. No email address needed. No, no. phone number. It doesn't no. matter. We don't do anything with it. No. <laughs> We're not selling it to anybody. What would we do with it anyway? Sell it. Prank we people. I'll just prank call people. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's another way that you can send us your confessional. Um, Pamela, we are available on Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. Apple Podcasts specifically really wants you to put in a review and a rating. How many stars do you want people to give on podcast? We love podcast? five. Five stars. Yes. If you do that, it moves us up in the algorithm so more brides and grooms can find us, help everybody else, be, be a fellow citizen to help others. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides Apple Podcasts, Pammy, we're on a lot of other podcast providers. So many. Um, there is two more besides Apple Podcasts that start with the letter A. What are they? Amazon. Yeah. And think with your ear. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, Audible. Audible. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Two <laughs> that tough. start with the letter C. Castro. Yep. And 
sounds the same as Castro Cast. Castbox. Castbox. There, there we are go. two that start with the letter D. You're very good at the D's. Deezer. I just like saying Deezer. Deezer. Deezer's so good. <laughs> Deezer and Downcast. Yes. One with the letter G. Google. One with the letter I. iHeartRadio. One with the letter O. Overcast. One with the letter L. Listen notes. We have eight with the letter P. Oh, good luck. Goodness. <laughs> Podbean, yes. Player FM, yes. Um, Parrot Podcast Paradise, yes. Um, Pocket Cast, um, Pocket something, um, yes. Pocket Cast is correct. Okay. Um, She's so good, guys. Mm, I got out of peas. Okay, podcast. Okay, so the, the rest are Podtail, Podcast Addict, Podcast Land, Podcast Republic, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, and using your lovely voices, you just have to say, play the Wedding Confessionals podcast using Alexa and Siri. And that's it, Pammy. That's it. We did it. Woohoo. Mariah, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. This was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. And Pammy, thank you for being my co host. I wanted to end on a very polite note. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. <laughs> okay, I'll see you next time, Pammy. Bye. Bye. Special thanks to Andy Schreier for our adorable theme song. And David Kantrowitz for our fantastic logo. And Ramsey Millett and Brian Maylard for their technical support. If you want to learn more about our show, where you got to go, Pam? Check out our website, weddingconfessionals.com. That's it, girl. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.